Let's talk about how to spend two perfect days in Évora, Portugal. Évora is a small and beautiful city in the south of Portugal. It has just over 56,000 inhabitants and it is home to the second oldest university and the largest cathedral in Portugal. And the city center is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. One of my favorite places that I visited when I was in Évora was the Cathedral of Évora or the Sé Catedral de Évora. It has a beautiful facade and it was absolutely stunning to walk up to. It took my breath away. would highly recommend just even passing by the cathedral, but you can actually go inside and not only visit the church part of the cathedral, but also go up on top to the roof to view the entire city. So it's a fantastic place to start your trip in Évora. I'm no historian, but I do know the cathedral was, uh, it was began being built in the 1200s. So coming from the States where we don't have that much history or even regardless, like that's incredible how old this church is. And obviously it's been updated since then, but it still maintains a very historical feel and it's a beautiful building. When you walk in, you can purchase a ticket depending on what you want to see. And I would recommend that you buy a ticket that includes the cathedral, the cloister, and the tower and that actually only costs three euros and fifty cents. If you want to visit the museum you can just add that on to your ticket for a euro more. But I don't think it's really that worth it unless you really know a lot about history because it's either a lot to read or the explanations aren't really full enough if for a novice like me. After buying the ticket, you can go right up to the tower. I don't remember exactly how many stairs but it wasn't that bad because um, although it does seem very tall when you're up there, it's not actually that high compared to other large cathedrals. After climbing the stairs, you'll be on the roof of the cathedral where you can catch amazing views of the city. Once you've enjoyed the sights, you can climb back down and enjoy the views of the cloister. Here you can catch different angles of the beautiful structures of the building. Then you can enter the actual cathedral where you can enjoy the dramatic heights of the building and its art and sculpture. Another one of my favorite things when I visited Evra was the Roman temple that exists in the city center of Evra also known as the Templo de Diana. And it kind of blows my mind, but this structure was built in the first century AD. Like I can't even compute how old that is. And it's fantastic, like how much of it is still there. And after you've seen the cathedral, you can just continue on for about a quarter of a mile and you'll find yourself at the temple. So I would definitely recommend seeing those on the same day because they're very close to one another. This temple has changed a lot and served many purposes over its history, but here it is still in the center of Evra. It is beautiful, impressive, and completely free to visit. So you can't miss this. A video on Evra isn't complete without mentioning the famous bone chapel. And yes, you heard me correctly. It is a chapel made out of human remains. I felt a little conflicted about this idea, but I definitely had to go and check it out. And what I learned from visiting the chapel and reading the explanation about it, uh, the, the chapel itself is supposed to give you a reflection on human life and a permanent closeness to faith. It's definitely a beautiful concept and the images of the chapel itself are striking. It's just really incredible to stand there and realize like how many bones were needed to construct this chapel. The chapel is actually a separate part of the Church of San Francisco with its own entrance. So when you see the grand entrance of the Church of San Francisco, you can just go off to the right and you'll find the entrance to the Bone Chapel. There you can buy the ticket, which is five euros. And then after or even before visiting the chapel, you can see the Church of San Francisco. It's again, very large, very grand, and definitely worth taking a walk through. If you're like me and you like taking a walk and just taking in the vibe of the city, then I would recommend that you walk along the old city walls of Evra. And I actually started this walk after visiting the Bone Chapel. You can go down to the uh, Jardim Publico de Evra or the Evra Public Garden, and then you can just 
follow a path through that park and you'll find a trail. Um, I'll mark it here where it is on the map. And there you will be able to walk along the walls, see this grand entryway inside of the walls. And you'll even, if you go far enough, you'll pass an aqueduct. Praça do Geraldo is one of the more picturesque and well-known places in the city. It has a beautiful fountain and has a lively atmosphere. And there are several restaurants near this area. I actually ate at a restaurant called Pipa Rosa, which is on a street just behind the square. And I had some of the best bujegu or lamb that I've had in my life. And then just some other little finds. While I was meandering through the streets of Evra, I did find the Church of Grasa. And the inside was rather simple, but the outside of the building is so beautiful. And last but not least, the University of Evra. So you can actually visit the University of Evra. They have a courtyard where you can see the beautiful structure of the building and you can actually peep into some of the classrooms if there aren't classes going on where you can see the old traditional Azulejo style tile paintings on the walls inside of the classroom. And this university actually dates back to the 1500s, which just blows my mind. So the weather in Evra can be a little difficult and the summer can get quite hot and the winter can be quite rainy, which if you haven't noticed from the footage that I have in this video, it rained the entire time that I was in Evra, but it wasn't really a problem. I actually felt like with the historical feel, the rain just kind of added to it and with an umbrella, I mean, easy solution. To get to Evra, it's really quick. If you're coming from Lisbon, you can get on the one of the CP Comboios de Portugal trains it takes around an hour and a half and it costs seven euros and 50 cents one way so 15 euros total for a round trip and then when you arrive to the train station in Evra you're about a 30 minute walk from the city center there are tons of places to stay in Evra and I'm sure there's a lot of fantastic ones I stayed at the Noble House Hotel and I really enjoyed it the staff was excellent they have a very generous breakfast that they provide and they also have a terrace where you can eat at the time i went i couldn't because it was raining but on another weekend i'm sure you could really enjoy having a coffee or drink out on the terrace the bed was so comfortable and i was just taken aback when i entered my room because i had dropped off my luggage to go walk around the city until it was time for check-in and when i came back they had already put the luggage in my room waiting for me there was a chocolate on my pillow and then they had a daily weather report for the days that i was going to be staying with them and they had two pastels nata or the pastel nata pastry and um a bottle of water and i just thought it was so kind and welcoming and I was, yeah, I was really impressed. And the most important part, it is super well located. It's within walking distance of any of the sites that you'll wanna see in Evra. So whether you stay at the Noble House Hotel or some other place, I would definitely recommend being centrally located. So if you like history, if you like good food, if you like a very walkable city with nice people, then I would highly recommend a trip to Evra. It's super close to Lisbon, so if you are in Lisbon and you wanna go there or you fly into Lisbon, it's easy to get there. I would say that two to three days is plenty of time to see Evra. There are some other sites outside of the city center if you have a longer time to stay there. And Evra is part of the Alentejo region, so it carries with that all of the food and wine tradition of the Alentejo region. So you may be able to do some more exploring after seeing the city center. But it has been one of my favorite trips in Portugal so far. I absolutely adore the city. I can't wait to go back. And if you have any questions about Evra or other cities you'd like to see or learn about in Portugal, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for coming on this little trip with me and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.